streaming live the day before all the craziness. Hey guys, that's my new song. Welcome. That's my new song about the craziness. This is a crazy time, guys. Crazy world. It's exciting though. It's not boring. That's for sure. No, no. How's your week been? Week has been okay. Started off with a really busy work week. Worked, felt like quite a few shifts in a row. Got a little stressed with work, but it, it ended up okay. It ended up okay. It ended up okay. At least you have a job. Yeah. Yep. That's true. That's true. Um, and then uh, my kids all got colds. So, you know, the sniffles, the coughs, that sort of stuff. The COVIDs. The COVIDs. COVIDs yeah. 2.0. And uh, <laughs> no, that's COVID point five. They're doing better though now. They're doing it's, better. I mean, COVID's just the same thing as the cold and the flu yeah. combined, right? That's pretty much, pretty much not really, but pretty well, much. COVID has the same letters in it as cold, so that's yeah, that's like nearly the same thing, right? Yeah, pretty hey, much. Hey, Danny, how's it going? So, anybody out there that's had COVID so far, not it, not it. Well, I mean, maybe, but who knows? Spent Shout out to Rodney, Rodney Spore, my bro. I miss you, buddy. Hopefully you're doing good. I think that someday we need to meet up and have a hangout session. Maybe when, I don't know, I don't know, maybe it's springs. I don't know, something like that. Meet what, up what, are you do, what are you doing tomorrow? What are you doing tomorrow, Rodney? <laughs> 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 oh, that's, that's what we do. We just wait for people to show up and be like, hey, do you want to hang out tomorrow? Yeah. Do you wanna- so what we did, though, what Jordan Ooh. and I just did this last week, we went on a really fun hike so we braved the fires we braved the that fires. aren't there anymore yeah. although we did see some smoke we did see some smoke yeah we um went hiking on a interesting hike that i'm surprised that neither of us have been on yet i am too i have had a lot of people that have said this is a really cool hike and i just haven't ever been on it until you were like hey let's go do this and i said i don't know if that's a great idea and then my eightness said we're gonna go do this yeah you basically said we're doing it yeah, like um, what time? Yeah, what time is it? and and you're gonna be there, and also you're gonna <laughs> and drive. Can you drive? <laughs> and yeah, so, so the hike we went on is a small little hike it's to a little forested area. Yep, just north of Detroit, little cave. Yep, on a little cave hike, and uh, it was interesting because it was right, pretty much in the path. It, it was. It was kind of where they would have converged. The path of where the the Beach, beachy, beachy Creek and the Lions Head Fire Lion would have converged, converged in this spot. Yeah, um, and it was interesting. Like we were hiking through the woods, and it was. Tell us how that started, Curtis. Um, where was that trailhead? Oh. So we so did we did we start on a trail? No, no, no. There were too many trees that had fallen down on a forest service road, and so we had to hike, park on the side of a forest service road, hike to where we thought the trailheads begun. Right. And unfortunately, the, the there had no we there couldn't was, find it. There was no trailheads anymore. So it might have been there, um, but right. instead, we had the genius idea that we would just peg the spot we wanted on GPS yep. and just walk. And it, that led us to like at least a forty-five degree incline for a good long ways. Oh, I would say f- more than forty-five. Probably a strong like. I, s- I, sorry, I meant to say at least seventy, maybe not seventy. At some ports, oh yeah, 70. seventy. Yeah, there were for sure some seventies. Maybe, maybe for a minute or so. Anywho, Curtis almost got hit by a boulder on the way down. I did. It felt a little bit like it felt like kind of like a Matrix move. Yeah, it was actually. I saw him bend at the knees and like throw the arms back. Did you see me throw the arms back? Yeah, well, I and I was wearing a black cape. Yeah. And at one point, I was like, "What? Does he have four arms?" And I'm like, "No, he's just moving so fast." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we were super ashy. By the time we got back from the hike. Yeah. When I took a shower, there was just, it was just black. Like it was just like, just but, everywhere. So the advantages of hiking right now are A. Nobody's there. Nobody's there. B, you don't have any underbrush that you're getting caught up on. True. And poking you. Although that's also like, I stepped in one spot and went to my knee because it was so squishy. It's, we said it a lot of times when we were up there, probably mostly me, but there's going to be so many mudslides up there. At, the ground is just not held in by anything, and it's kind of scary. Like, right. as soon as it snows and rains good, it's bad news bears. Like, yeah, at least in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> right. So, so it was a fun hike. I would recommend anybody, um, if you have the availability, to go out and hike around, make it yeah. happen because it's easy peasy, it lemon good, squeezy, it was decent weather. Yeah, my legs still hurt really bad, mostly from coming down. I've realized coming down hills that's my weakness. Cardio is much easier going down, but joints much but harder. Joints and quads, like yeah, and you're constantly trying to stop yourself in that stupid soft dirt. Oof. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Pretty gnarly. But it's good. Good times. Dude, so many crazy things happened this week in the world. <sighs> and so many things are about to happen. And so many things are about to happen. So first of all, I just want to like, I'm not, I'm not going to try to be a down or anything like that. I just want to make some social comments about some of the things that happened this past Do it. week or Hit a couple me. weeks. First of all, okay. There was the attack that happened in, in France. Remember right. where the, a teacher had drawn a picture of Muhammad and yes. a shown it in class, uh, extremist Muslim individual decided yes. to attack that teacher and chop the teacher's head off. Right. Right. Well, apparently, and I, I don't, believe this was actually uh, a, <clears throat> a person that had done a drawing or anything like that but mm-hmm. it was a, a an additional retaliation for the pictures that were drawn yeah a woman a 70 year old woman was in a church and a knife wielding extremist went into the church killed a total of three people but what? the 70 year old woman he killed her and chopped her head off and seems when i when i read that article when i read that article i was thinking about this like this woman probably it, it said basically you know she was an outstanding citizen she was a you know a good person had a, had lived a good life had a good head on her had shoulders. a good head on her shoulders oh my god <laughs> and sorry it's a sad thing it's but a, also no, no, it's, i mean it's a good observation had a good head on her shoulders until she didn't but can you imagine like if you had a timer and you knew i'm gonna live till i'm 70 but then my head's going to be but chopped off. But then my off. head's going to be chopped off. Like, what type well, of and life? And then here's the deal. What is going... Was it a Cutco knife, Amador? <laughs> uh, I, I miss Amador commenting. <laughs> That's a good so, one, Amador. <laughs> I'm sure it was. It, it had to have been. It cut through a shoe right before. Ugh. But anyway, it's dumb that in this country, that this ha- number one, this happened to this teacher, and it seems like not a lot's been done. And that the, Well, they the, actually did. The country... The good. Good. They did a decent amount. They need to string them up. That's what they need to do. Like, it's just dumb. Like, well, with the other, the other person that was um, attacked, that killed an individual, that killed the teacher, Mm -hmm. they actually found that person and did shoot him. Good. And then they uh, arrested several family members in connection with it. Good. Yeah. Um, But anyway, so. That's dumb. It's dumb that something like that. Yeah. It's dumb. But I was just, it's just crazy to think about. You never know where you're going to end up in life. She was just relaxing in a church, yeah. and someone came and sliced I mean, and diced. That's true of any situation. That's, any situation that, that's like that. But what a crescendo that would be! Yeah, <laughs> what a wild, wild. She lived to seventy. I mean, a lot of people like they get to that age and or they don't make it to that age, and something tragic happens like that. Right. Yeah. Um, so I was just that was something crazy I heard about that happened this last week, and I was just thinking like, oh my gosh, so many crazy things that are going sucks. on with that. But then that that led me to thinking about like preventative measures as far as like attack and tear and all yeah. these things. And um, I heard an, uh, a news article that came out about Kate Brown recently. Did you hear what she just announced? She, no. uh, she declared starting well, five, I mean, I have, 5 PM tonight until is it 7 PM on Wednesday night. Um, she declared a, a state of emergency again till this and January she, 2nd, right? No, no, no. This is for, she ready. She uh, deployed the national guard. Oh, so the National Guard have been oh for the election. Uh huh. They've been deployed. So they, they also and they also lengthen the state of emergency for COVID till January. 2nd. Oh, okay, yeah. No, this was specifically for the election. So in certain districts throughout Oregon and downtown Portland, and I don't <laughs> think I'm not sure about Salem. Salem maybe. It's dumb that we have to do that. I'm glad that they're being smart enough to do that because Portland has been pegged as one of the places that, well, regardless right. of where it goes, like it, it and it's dumb. It's it's both extreme sides of the things. People need to just calm down and realize that if your person wins great congratulations you did it you voted for the person that won i i don't know what kind of a, an award you want for that um, but if they don't win it, it's we're still in this country together we're still we're still here as human beings that have to live together in this country and make it work so let's like just be nice to each other right but i was thinking about the um the benefit of already having the National Guard deployed yeah, for several reasons. One, part of the hard, the difficulty to me is when they allow protesters <laughs> to, no matter what side they're coming from, start breaking down and tearing up things. Like basically that's our tax dollars that they're just destroying. Or it's the businesses that they're saying, you know, we want, we want safety and all that kind of stuff. You're, you're not hurting, you're, you're hurting the people around you. You're not, you're not proving a point. In fact, you're making your point worse. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I'm all for peaceful protest. You can protest for whatever you want. I don't care. You know, I 
I was in the military. I fought for our freedoms to vote however we want and a myriad of other things, but also peaceful protest is part of our constitution, which you take an oath to uphold and we should be able to do that. But when, as soon as it strikes into not peaceful protests, um, you're just hurting the people around you yeah. that, that may have share the same views as you and they may change their mind and not be with you. But if we don't like band together and like, like band of brothers. Yeah. <laughs> So we got we've got election 2020. Oh my gosh, guys! Can this you is believe that it's, tomorrow. Um, I mean, polls open what? very soon, what? and uh, we want to talk about it. I we have we we had a great chat on our hike. Yes, was it was that that wasn't yesterday? Yes, it was. That was yesterday. It was yesterday. We had a great chat on our hike yesterday, and it 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 we wanted to have this discussion last night. Just didn't work out. Families, all that kind of stuff. But we want to tonight. But I want to start out with something because I had never read, and my wife talked me into not reading but um listening to 1984 and i and i was listening to it a little bit today and i read a part that i thought would be great to open up with because the one of the things that we stand for here and kind of kicked off this this podcast idea is that we all have different opinions Mm -hmm. we all have different perspectives life choices life you know circumstances and all that kind of stuff and so we respect people's perspectives and opinions even if we don't agree with them true and we, you know, there's tons of things that Curtis and I don't agree on. And sometimes we give each other crap about them. But we kind of also appreciate that. Like that's but an at the end of the day, thing yeah, for us to it, have someone with a little bit of right, a Right. It opinion. allows us to kind of grow and, and understand someone else's perspective. And I think that's something that's been lost. There's a lot of people that are angry. at Like, for instance, uh, if someone votes for Trump, it's, it's a dangerous thing to say in a lot of places. And they may not have bad reasons for voting for Trump, regardless of maybe Trump has done some bad or good things. And vice versa, someone might be mad that someone votes for Biden and think that they're dumb, or they might think that someone's dumb for voting for Trump. But like, those are different perspectives in different places they come from. Neither one of them are perfect. There's so many different things that you could point out to say they've done these bad things. Why? How could you vote for them with good conscience? Like, you could say that about any person. So what's this quote you got? So this quote that I have is this. It's from 1984. It says, it was curious to think that the sky was the same for everybody in Eurasia and East Asia, as well as here. And the people under the sky were also very much the same everywhere, all over the world, hundreds or thousands of millions of people just like this, people ignorant of one another's existence, held apart by walls of hatred and lies, and yet almost exactly the same people who had never learned to think, but were storing up in their hearts and bellies and muscles the power that would one day overturn the world. I feel like we... we, we've kind of been trained to like hate each other for each other's perspectives instead of like appreciating and learning. I think there's, you could learn a lot more from sitting across the table from someone that has a different perspective than you. If you just have the patience to listen to them and maybe they'll give you the same respect and you can learn something from each other. Yeah. So with all that, that's a good point. Let's talk about these elections (laughs) taking. So in, in general though, the idea to kind of summarize that taking, an experience of having an interaction with somebody that has a different opinion or a different belief from you, seeing what you can learn from that and gain from that right. is a valuable resource and asset. And I feel like people, rather than use seeing it as a, a, taking it as an offense, see it as an opportunity. Yeah. Or they, they dismiss it immediately in anger because it doesn't align with themselves. Yeah. So I heard some interesting stuff about this election coming up. Yes. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of interesting stuff. I don't about know if anybody's it. heard about it, but apparently it's <clears throat> happening. The election? The election. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Hopefully. Um, and I think it would be pretty much kind of a foolish thing to assume that it's going to be a clear cut case tomorrow. Don't oh. you think? I don't think it's foolish, but I think that's your opinion. Tell but, me what you think. But I think that it's not going to be a clear cut situation tomorrow. I think that due to the fact that there is so much melon voting happening this year. Yeah. Um, and so many alternative methods for voting that they won't have a complete and accurate count come tomorrow. They may not, and they never have a lot of them done. There's a lot of states that have actually already started to count. I was listening today on a different, a couple of different places, but a lot of them were like CNN and stuff like that. A lot of states have already said we've started and we plan to have a lot of it done by tomorrow night because we think that the people deserve to have that. That's the way it's always been. Some have said we're falling behind. And then I think some are just more so just like planning for the best or hoping for the best 
planning for the worst kind of situation, not trying to get people's hopes up too much. I, th- I think we will have a clear cut decision tomorrow, at least enough that we know what it's going to be once they're so all in. So there was um, a really interesting podcast on the daily that I was listening to, and they were talking about how pollsters. Yeah. Basically for 2016 were mm-hmm. really thrown off and they were surprised by the fact that they got it so wrong. How did we get these elections so wrong? Right. And a lot of the current main most popular polling companies are saying like if we get this one wrong, then we will even be more surprised than we were in 2016. Yeah. Cuz currently right now, according to our polls, it's saying Biden has a significant lead. Yeah. And it looks like Trump will be beaten. So they're saying if we don't, if we do not win, the, or we don't basically call this correct, yeah, then nobody, then, then our whole system is off. <laughs> yeah, but I they, think I think they are scared. But maybe their whole system is off because you were, yeah. had mentioned that there's a new, um, or not a new, but a single poll company that yeah. called it for Trump in 2016, and p- apparently they're doing it differently. Yeah. So I I. I went on a deep dive. All my household fell asleep pretty early and I didn't have any friends up to play video games with. So I was like, I started like watching a bunch of different stuff. And before people start thinking like I only looked one direction, I totally, I listened to like a lot of stuff and from all different perspectives. Cause I was like, I want to see like how they do this. Cause my, one of my favorite classes in college was statistics. And I loved learning about like how to, how, I how did can not, you get, I did not enjoy that How class. can you get a number from such a small sample group that is so accurate mm-hmm. because there's quite a few that are shockingly accurate and what are you doing are you lighting the french fry yeah okay there's a there's quite a few that are shockingly accurate with very small sample sizes like you name anything like who, what kind of gas people buy what kind of bread people buy all right. kinds of, it's it's not a large sample size but there's there's these numbers that they have to hit and i don't know exactly what the percentage is anymore but it's been way too long since I took the class but I was curious because a poll is only as good as its data right and so to get that data the way that they're doing things now from what I can understand and from what I've read and what I've listened to hasn't changed a lot over the years most of the polls are just over the phone Mm -hmm. and a lot of them Oh, really? They're mostly over the phone? Yeah, they're live. A lot of them are like during times where people wouldn't want to be bothered, like they'd be rushed. And they really, they're really kind of like poignant. Like they don't allow you, they don't allow a lot of an anonymity. Okay. And so I think that that, I don't think that that's necessarily a terrible way to do it, but how many times, I don't talk on the phone as much as I did 10 years ago. So how does this new company do it different? So this new company, there's a couple things that they do. Number one, they ask questions differently and they also add a question that's really interesting. So they'll ask you, first off, they give you, they give people a lot more anonymity and they don't do a lot of live on the phone type stuff. So they don't say necessarily, they do, I'm assuming they probably do it via text and they say a lot of their polls can be done in 90 seconds or less. Because part so of on the, the phone, it takes a little while. Part of the reason that there was theorized that the um, election polling was so off in 2016 is because people were so concerned that they would be judged for yes. who they were voting and for. And so that was the other thing was fear. So there was a lot of Trump supporters that were Lying. closet Trump supporters, <laughs> but they were so afraid of society and everyone around them would 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 think of them so they decided right. obviously okay i'm not going to do that i'm not going to vote for i'm not going to tell people yes. i'm going to vote for trump but really they did so they're trying this new poll company is trying to counter yeah them. but there's one other question that they add so not only given anonymity and giving a better way for people to complete the poll at their own whim they can they can they can i, I didn't look exactly how they do it but he basically said they can take it they can come they can answer a question and come back later and continue the poll so they don't have to oh, do it right cool. away. It's at their own discretion. It's it's at their own speed, pace, timing, kind of like video on demand. Like people don't watch live TV anymore. A lot of times they just watch Netflix or video on demand or something that's been pre-recorded or YouTube right. or something like that. But the question that they ask that's very interesting is they ask a neighbor question. They say, okay, now that you've answered how you feel like you would vote, 
how do you think your neighbor would vote? Oh, that's fascinating. And so that neighbor question is really what's thrown these other poll companies off. They've said, no, this is un, this is unsubstantiated science and all that kind of stuff. And there's some other things that they said is proprietary to the ways that they do things that they will not reveal because it's kind of their patented way of doing these polls. But they clearly got it right in 2016. They not only got it right in 2016, down to one state difference. Hmm. But they, they called exactly the the amount of votes that or the the delegates or whatever amount of electoral votes. electoral votes that they would get perfectly which is crazy that's nuts and then they also got most of the midterm elections correct that's wild and nobody else did they and they called some republicans and then they so now they get harped on because the guy that does it used to be like a republican like i don't know what he was like some sort he worked in the republican party for something hmm. So they kind of harp on him for, for doing that. He's like, no, 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 no. We don't favor it. We just want to get it right. Like if we get it right, then people will respect us. So why would we want to call something wrong? And so he named all these democratic things that they had called as well during the midterms. But they're like, we just go off our data. So which that, is that, all that said, like it, it was interesting to find out like, okay, so the, the way the data is collected definitely affects what the data looks like and it changes what the poll will say. And so if you don't have right, these new right. ways, he's saying like, He's comparing the old ways to like dinosaurs or people that would make fun of people that use the phone versus the telegraph. Like we have to change the way that we do things, which is true. And speaking of the way, of ch- so that in summary basically is a pretty, cry- uh, uh, it's kind of like a cry for, um, yeah, we have to adapt the way that yeah. we are collecting data when people are feeling like they can't be honest to those pollers, yeah. essentially. And, and that's people want to think about is. it in a weird way. Like Trump is the first president that posts on social media. Well, Obama did a little bit, but not much because it was much. barely coming in. He, I mean, right. when he when he started, they said the hardest thing to do is to separate it from his BlackBerry. Right. Yeah. So think about that for a second. Right. The iPhone wasn't around yet when he first started. Was it not? No. Oh wow. That's if it wild. was, it was in its infancy and it wasn't accepted in the corporate world. Now the iPhone is almost the standard for the corporate world. Right. Right. Because yeah. of its security. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so speaking of tech and tracking and um kind of the the influence of technology in our youth and our schools there's um a new software program that's been floating around and a lot of people that are in school right now and they're having to do school remotely are going to be familiar with this yeah but there's a new program going around that a lot of universities um are implementing um, and it's a eye tracking program. Oh my gosh. So it's a s- eye tracking surveillance tool. Yes, to make sure they're paying attention. That's No, no, no. That schools are using for exams. Oh. So when the kids are taking the tests, um, they're proctored tests basically that happen through this program. It's called Proctoro. And what happens is the, 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 the student will be on the test. The test, the soft, the school buys the software from Proctoro. All of the exams then get done through Proctoro, and then they have to have a camera on yeah. their computer. And then the the software looks at how many, how much eye movement the kid has during the test. How many times he's moved his head left, right. If he's not moved his head, if, if the student he or she has not moved their head enough, if they moved it too much or not enough, if they have moved in their hands how many clicks they're making if it's too many clicks if they scroll up and down too many times and apparently what's happening is it's alarming the the it's telling the school tons of times saying hey this student is cheating and the students are like i'm not cheating like it's basically like ruining it's it's probably trying to like keep them from checking their phones for Mm -hmm. answers and things like that exactly so it's 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 causing a ton of issues. And not only that, several times throughout the exam. So there was this one law student that was trying to take his um, boards or not boards, uh, bar mm-hmm. exam. And throughout the exam, it has to take your, basically has to take a picture yeah. of you. And the, the, the problem is, is that a lot of people of colored ethnicities are having a lot of hard time with this test because it's saying you're not oh providing gosh. sufficient lighting so you're trying to cheat somehow. So it's racist. And so it's exactly the guy's like, I can't make my skin color any different. And so it keeps like throwing alarms saying, hey, this student is not doing it correctly. He's he's falsely, you know, turning his lights down too low. Right. So we can't pick up his skin color. Basically, <laughs> it's like so basically not only is it a program that's 
cheating. You know, it's funny. Kids. This is this kind of software is already used. Like they use it on Google. They use it on pages. Anywhere you have to click the "I'm an I'm not a robot" button, mm-hmm. it's it's tracking your mouse and how much you move and everything to see if you feel like a computer. Oh, that's interesting. So it's probably near the same. But if you know how many times you have to click those pictures, mm-hmm. that's usually when you fail that test. Like when you, because oh, I always fail that because sometimes you click the box, you just check the box, and it says, "Okay, yeah. you're not a robot." Why does it do that? Well, if it goes onto the pictures, yeah. it's because you failed that test. But how did you fail that test? It doesn't think it thought that you weren't acting like a human enough. Oh, okay. Like your screen size wasn't the right. It knows the size of your window. It knows how much you've scrolled up and down. Oh, it knows wow. how much your mouse is moving, where you're clicking, how direct on the button you are. I always it's like, like it says select on the crosswalk. And I'm like, I swear I clicked every single crosswalk yeah. and then it gives me another picture. There's like, usually a crosswalk what? in the sky. I'm oh. Just, no, I'm kidding. Totally <laughs> kidding. <laughs> like, this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, okay, it says street lights, but does that count the bar? I always include the bar too. Not just the street lights. I just include the whole oh, pole. Oh, I never include the bar. I always include the whole pole. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's Ooh. frustrating. Yeah. Very frustrating to me. But anyways, yeah, so that was kind of a crazy thing with technology. But there's a lot of stuff going on with technology. Well, well, before we get more deep into technology, yeah, you got anything else here? Well, no, I, I mean, there's there's tons more in the election stuff, which I, oh I, yeah, I would like to touch on. Okay, but yeah, I mean, me. I don't mind bouncing around. So, um, so the name of the group, by the way, because we didn't actually get to that, the the polling group that everyone thinks is like, and now they're in the limelight. Like they they have gotten so much attention that their page hardly works because so many people have started putting them up and saying, this is the only place calling Trump to win. Whoa. This is the only place calling Trump to win. Oh, that's crazy. And so they're like, get, like beyond just bum rushed, like on their website that it's just like crawling. Um, it's called the Trafalgar group, by the way, we'll put a link in the, in the right. show notes. That's right. Everything. Trafalgar. The guy wears a bow tie. It's really cute. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so what was the, uh, the thing that happened in the 60 minutes? thing interview with biden no th- these were just different things that i was watching during that time so like oh, when i okay. when i was watching the and i can't i came across the trafalgar group gotcha. i watched the 60 minutes interview with joe biden which i yeah i just if you like biden that's cool i i think he's really really old and i think it's dangerous for our country i mean trump's old too trump's really old too and i don't know the, there, so this is what i say I like the policies that Biden is saying he will enact. Whether or not he actually will do those things, I, I can't say if he will. Um, <laughs> or that will he remember be, he said them. Will he be around <laughs> to enact those things? Right. So the the questions are, this is, this is I think, what would have been helpful for Biden and Kamala's case, too, if, if because of how old how old biden is yeah if kamala would have had her own policies that she would see have that's she does time. but she like i don't know that people in california even really like her do they um i think well i think they they definitely see her as a lesser of two evils i think they like the her lesser f- of two evils yeah so that's a thing I, I i someone that watches our show texted me the other day and i was asking him about what they voted for on a certain thing and why and they texted me back and said i had a rule when I was reading through the pamphlet that if anyone's defense was that the other person was worse than them, I didn't vote for them because he didn't, he didn't feel like he could trust that Hmm. because if that's their defense. And I think that that's the one thing that like, that's, I think that's the one, one of the, you don't have any other options. That's one of the areas that, well, except that, except you could like present your policies. So you, you could say like, this is what I stand on. These are my policies. But if you're, if you're, if more of what you're saying is that person sucks, vote for me. Oh, oh, that, oh, you're saying the person that's running. Yes. Oh, okay. So yeah. So like, I feel like Biden, that's all he, that's a lot of what he's done. Not all. I won't say all. There's been some things that he's done, but a lot of it is, come on, man. Like if I played a drinking game of come on, man, see the thing, I'd that, be drunk here's, two here's minutes the thing. in. It's such an easy thing to do when you're running against. Oh, Trump for sure. Because he gives you so much. Ammo. Dude. Yeah. But so much. Ammo. I think the problem there though, and it would be really hard and I don't know that I would be good at it either. So I'm not like faulting him at all, but he kind of like bury himself. If you just leave it there. Yeah, he would. Yeah. So well, that's what Biden was doing at first. Remember, he was being super quiet. He wasn't really even yeah. engaging. But the in second any one was more of a that he's not good. Don't vote for don't vote for me because otherwise you get him. Like and Trump does the same thing. I just it just it's annoying. It's like just tell me what you're gonna do. Yeah. Don't. I like that shouldn't be your base. I do 
think that either way, this is the first time, and maybe it's because I'm the <laughs> oldest I've ever been in an election. Yeah. This is the most I've ever seen as far as people talking about and posting um, social unrest. This is the most I've seen. Yeah. And it's, I, th- I, I think it, I think it's more of a state of where our country's at than mm-hmm. Trump and Biden. Running. I, but like, do you think there's such an amplification from social media that, that if we did not have Facebook, Instagram blasting us with daily, uh, probably like, you know, s- stressful and even TikTok, yeah. you know, stressful videos of antagonizing groups. I feel like that would, that would, I definitely, diminish think, a significant it, I definitely think it plays a part. For I mean, sure. even if it's like a 2% increase mm-hmm. when you're dealing with 350 million yeah. people, 2% increase is significant. Yeah, I would fully support voting to make it illegal to advertise for political things on social media of any kind. I don't think it's healthy. Yeah, I agree. I like that. Um, yeah. Maybe I'm an outlier, but I, I just, I don't. <laughs> if by chance Biden wins, he will be a president who dies in the office. They're setting up to have a female president. Now, I'm not against a female president. I mean, I'll be honest. I'll say it here. If Tulsi had won that, or mm. if Biden had picked Tulsi's Tulsi. Tulsi's my girl. Tulsi's my if girl. If Tulsi had been picked as VP, I'd be really tempted. Harris, I like, I Harris, like Tulsi. Harris scares me, though. Um, so Amador made a good point. He said, isn't every election the oldest election you've ever been in an election? Oh, for sure. In an election? Yeah. Yes, I think it that's, is true. That's called math. That's how that works. Very true. Time. I think I was making more of an observation of as I get older, I become yeah. more aware of what's happening in the world because it affects me more, maybe. Yeah. Um, but yes, very astute observation, I'm adoring, yeah. for sure. Faux I've, show. I've definitely become more patient, though. Like, I understand, like, the young people being upset that somebody doesn't share their view. What? But I, I want to be, like, that old person that says, hey, y- you can learn from other people. If you just keep yourself in an echo chamber, you're going to be surprised at the results yeah. all the time. Right. Right. For sure. For sure. Because we were we were talking in the car. and You asked me a question. What, what was your question? Do you remember? Um, Depending on who wins, you said. Oh, the ra- about the rash? Where, where's your rash at? Yeah, that. Oh. that it's Sorry, butthole. <laughs> um, the <laughs> um, no, um, you said how... Like, where are you at? Like, oh, yeah, Depending yeah, yeah. on who you, you yeah. ask it. No, no, I was trying I think, to remind you so you would ask I it. I think it was, if I'm right, was it if... <laughs> this is another smart-ass question. Depending on... Are you emotionally... How are you going to handle it emotionally, depending on you who You did wins, ask that. And right? I said, I, I honestly, like, I'm going to accept whoever it is. Like, I, I, it's fine. Like, yeah. I'm not going to be... I'm not going to be shocked either direction. Right. And I... Right. But what was what was the question you were alluding to? Is that you said how much civil? Do you think there will be civil unrest, riot, looting? Um, oh, either uh, way, up to and including civil war, either way. Right. Yeah, and I said hundred percent. Yeah, and I was surprised that you said hundred percent. Hundred percent. I don't think there. I don't think hundred percent civil war, but definitely there's going to be rioting, and looting, no matter who wins. It's gonna. It sucks. Okay. Here's a good question. I wish I was wrong. Here's but a good I'm question. Not. Do you think there would be more rioting if the um, Democratic Party wins, or more rioting if the uh, Republican Party wins. I think it'll what be. Do you guys think? I don't think what do you guys think? I think it'll be nearly the same, but I think that if the Republican Party wins, there will be more media coverage of it. I think they would be almost identical, but more coverage would be made if Trump wins. Of the rioting, yes. Mm, I don't know because there was a significant amount of 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 uh, media coverage with the rioting during the BLM. There and was. In you know Portland and that no no sort of no thing. I know but those are the causes that they know that if they don't support they will become the enemy mm, okay. so that's what I'm saying if they don't give coverage to it, it's like the people that showed up here for the fires to like protest the the fire trucks going through to fight the fires they were upset because they didn't have attention anymore and they mm. wanted attention and it didn't work here like they didn't realize that in the country they'll just get shot mm-hmm. but like um <sighs> yeah that's interesting but. But yeah, so I think there would be more, and it's, again, it's just my opinion. It's yeah. just what I think. It's it's not like if someone's that's just my gut, my gut reactions. Like this is probably yeah, what would happen. I agree. But that makes sense. If the if the Democratic Party, wins, I wish that wasn't true. I wish I that think people, if the Democratic Party wins, they'll want to show an agenda of people being happy that that because their party won. Yeah. Right. And they wouldn't. Yeah. 
for sure. Because that's kind of, I mean, that's where the media leans. And it's, it's not like, it's not a secret or anything. I don't even think Fox leans right. I think that, like, I think most people are at least centered to far left, like, right. leaning. Like, the, if you want to get far right extreme, you got to, like, go to the people that have got banned off Facebook and all that kind of stuff. You, you, you're going to have to go, you're going to have to go listen to Ben Shapiro or, <laughs> or something, something that's not on the main networks to even get something that's people would consider to be far right. Like, you know. Well, and it's interesting. So this is so we've we've been talking about elections, and tonight we're kind of talking about elections combined with social media, combined with social media influence, right? Um, Here, hang on, just one sec, because mm-hmm. Amador was there when Trump got elected last time. Did you see what he said? No. Huh? He said so. They tried to four years ago when Trump won. They made it out to be a huge protest and riots in D.C. when it was announced. They happened to be there, which I saw his videos on Facebook of him in front of the White House, and they saw none of what they'd showed. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the same thing that in yeah. Portland. But, I mean, it, they're already gearing up in Portland. They're gearing up in these big cities where the riots have already been at. There's businesses right. boarding themselves up. Like, it's sad. Well, so, what I think, like you said, Jordan, if we had a way of eliminating s- political-leaning... Um, or influencing videos yeah. or ads on social media, then that would decrease the feeling that people have of the social unrest right. and the struggle that people are going through, and and cause less, add less fuel to the fire. Yeah. Um, and that all then you t- have to make the decision where that where that comes from because people are going to get their information from somewhere. Well, but, but going then, back to what you had said, I don't know if you said it here, you said it before we mm-hmm. started, but you said if it even if it even if that sways someone's perspective like two percent, right? So that's an interesting number because that's what they had said when Brexit happened. They they attributed that sway, which was only a two to three percent sway, to go to Brexit on false ads on social media, right? And so, so what happens is, is you have this subtle, even if it's not a significant influence, you have the subtle influence that has a dramatic outcome yeah. because you're dealing with hundreds of millions of individuals. Yeah. Um, so that brings, that brings me back to the point of wanting to bring up, if you guys haven't watched it yet, I th- encourage you to watch it. <laughs> the social dilemma on Netflix. It I have is, not watched it. It is wild guys. The social dilemma. And basically it's not something that I really was surprised about cause I had known yeah. it was taking place but the degree that social media platforms are monitoring you right and then are essentially have a super ai computer feeding you information that makes you want to come back to it sooner and makes you want to look and keep scrolling so imagine that basically like in the documentary it shows this small little avatar and every single time you like something it adds another aspect to that avatar yeah. and then every time you comment on something it adds another picture or it adds another feature to that avatar that looks more like you yeah until you get to the point where it's like this avatar that is like 100 percent so satisfying to everything you want to see and you want to right. stay aware of that it it's impossible for you not to get addicted to it, which is it supports one of my theories, which is well, a lot of people say like, well, Facebook gave me this ad and it can hear me. It's microphones on all that kind of stuff. I don't think it does. Cause it would burn your battery out super duper fast. Maybe sometimes, but not all the time. I think that yeah. Facebook knows you better than you think. Mm-hmm. And it knows what you're going to want to see. And the things <laughs> that you notice, those ads that you notice are just when it got it right. Right. Well, and that's an interesting thing because it talks about how people are like, ah, I just need to have more self control because I'm like, I keep going back to this. But people, what people don't realize is it's kind of like you are battling against one of the, against the world's leading artificial intelligence and software and mm-hmm. programs that know you better than you know you. Yeah, which is and that terrifying. is it's only getting stronger and more. And if capable. that can if that can form who you are and touch your emotions and, and your political, yeah, and it. It, in, uh, opinions yeah. then that even becomes yeah. f- and then uh, and then you add into that the the people that are like because i've been i've been blocked by people for not even saying anything honestly and people create these bubbles of thinking this they're is probably what, being prejudiced pre- prejudiced, prejudiced against, against, against my race well, yeah probably yeah. um but they create these bubbles of just they want to hear what they want to hear and they only want to hear the people that say the things that make them feel good and everything right and it's like i i can honestly say I've only ever blocked like one or two people in the history of when I've had a Facebook account 
or Twitter but or whatever. But that's, the program is telling people like this is this is what you want. No, no, I know, I know. But you can sort by time, which which I usually do. Sort by mm, recent. Not on I, Instagram. No, you cannot. But I don't hardly ever go on Instagram. Uh, a lot of people do. I know they do. But I'm saying for myself. So like in 2016, I've told people this before, and nobody believes me. It's like I wasn't super shocked when when Trump won. Mm. But I also hadn't changed who I saw on social media. Right. And so I had like a, a wide gamut of different views. I have libertarian friends, people who didn't vote, people that were severely liberal, severely right wing. But you would be more surprised this year if Biden won. No, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't be shocked whoever wins this year. If I was going to make a call right now, I've already told people this. I was like, I want to get this out there before it happens. Right. That so way, if it does out. happen, you can be like, Okay, you were right. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz it's it's a lot easier to say now. And it's fine. I told someone I was like, I'm going to go do this podcast. I'm live and I'm going to share my opinion of what I think's going to happen. Either I'm going to look like I'm a wizard with a crystal ball or I'm going to look like a buffoon and I'm totally fine with either one of them. But it's not like I'm not going to lose my shit over this. I there's so much more riding on this. Like if you want to like get like if you want to make influence, it's like at a grassroots level in your hometown to your state, like that's where things change. Like state laws change federal laws. That's where it really matters. I mean, the president does matter, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter to the degree that I think a lot of people give it. And my skin is too white. I'm blocking <laughs> you. <laughs> Thanks. Amador. Well, um, so my call is this. What's your call? I think that there will be a decisive vote by tomorrow night. Mm, interesting. I think that um, Trump will win 296 electoral votes to 232 for Biden. Okay. And I think that he will also take the popular vote. Mm. And that's not based on my opinion. Very interesting. Of it. It's not based on it's whatever. It's just like my deep dive of a few hours of looking into yeah. the numbers and looking at how data is formed and everything. That's just my call. So I don't. It, here's my maybe call. Maybe I'm totally bonkers my nuts. call joe jorgensen he's gonna win i did i i'm gonna be honest I, I voted for joe jorgensen guys okay i know that won't likely happen but this is what well, i well, think no, will you, happen. See, you were super confident yesterday <sighs> he was gonna win she <laughs> she that's what i meant yeah. he um, don't have a name like joe yeah well um it's really close to joe rogan so it is it has like his oh name in it. i wonder how many people wrote in joe rogan this year I, i'm sure I i'm sure thousands yeah um but this is what I think will happen. I think it will be an election where tomorrow it will show Trump in the lead. Okay. All of the ballots will not have come in by tomorrow. I well, think they Trump have to. No, they yes. won't have. They won't have been counted. Oh yeah. So Say all of the ballots, will, especially the mail-in ballots, will not have been counted. I think it's until the seventeenth. I think it's something like that that they have to count them. It's quite a while. I think tomorrow Trump will call it. He'll say. I'm the victor. Mm. Um, I do not believe Biden will um, call it. I think Biden will, he won't, what is it called when they say like you win? Concede. I don't think Biden will concede. I think Biden is going to hold on to it. And I think he's going to wait until every single one of those melon ballots have come in. Yeah. And I think as you watch over the next week to maybe two weeks, I think it's yeah close to two weeks. Yeah. Um, you're going to see these ballot counts continue to come in. And you're going to see a, a, a shift in the overall number Maybe. of votes, and to the to to the extent that are eventually, and I don't know how that would play in with electoral votes because I don't know if the electoral votes then can get changed later on or not. Well, so the electoral votes only happen. It depends on the state. So, like, let's take Oregon for example. It's based on different areas within the state. There's there's lines that are drawn, and that area gets a spot for the state and then that majority of those is what goes towards the people of us that cast their votes so like each state has a different amount of electoral votes that they can give away and those are people usually in most states that vote those and they they're supposed to vote with the people well okay something interesting that just happened in my neighborhood guys um conveniently the day before elections yes <laughs> our mail carrier truck was driving up and down the street and it caught fire <gasps> and <gasps> massively burnt the entire truck and everything in it so that's hilarious kind of ish and not cool 
at the same Crazy. time. But also, don't mail your ballot right now. Go drop it off because the post mat the post date does not count. So, mm. some interesting things. Number one, there is one hundred seventeen thousand votes that they're trying that they they're trying to get rid of. This federal judge in Texas is trying to get rid of, and I believe it was. I think this was the one where they did like drive-in voting. Um, and it that apparently doesn't fit the constitution like you can't do that like it can be so there's some states that have really weird laws so like michigan you it's against the law to have paid transport to voting so the the government cannot have transport for people who don't have transport going around that are paid people to bring them in to vote i gotcha it's against the law and they 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 can busing people in to vote they held with it this year that actually went to a Supreme court and they held, oh. they held, they upheld wow. that law. So there's a few different laws. There's also some laws on taking selfies with your vote. So if say you're not in Oregon, Oregon's totally fine. They like, don't care what you do with your pictures, but there are States that you can invalidate your vote by taking a selfie with your vote while casting it oh, interesting. or in the poll. Like there's pictures allowed outside the poll office, but not inside the poll office there. Like, so there's different rules that can invalidate your vote. And so there's a lot of people right now that are like up in arms trying to get some votes thrown out that and the, like this drive in voting that was wow. happening. They're trying to get thrown out. Um, so there's just like these these super strange things going on that don't really like make the big news. That's crazy. Um, but anyway, so that's anyway, those are, that's just my call. And <laughs> you can have your call, too. I in. And it's just like, you know, we'll see what happens. I don't I don't know. I don't think it's going to stretch on that long. What I do think. I would agree with you on, and I think that we were li- when we were listening to that Joe Rogan episode with Alex Jones and stuff. He called it seventy nine days of hell. I do think it's going to be horrible between this and the inauguration, um, especially if Trump wins. Ooh, yeah. And I think it's, either way, it's, it's going to be a cluster. It is going to be a cluster, but I think that it wouldn't be as big of a cluster if Biden won it. Um, but I don't think he's going to. Okay, well, one thing I wanted to uh, throw down um, before... Actually, should we do Shower Thoughts on TIL before I do that quote? Oh, no, let's do it now. Yeah. And, then, and then we'll go into it. Yeah, no, I, I like your quote. Okay. Um, so going back into you know the influence of media and influence of social media and these AI plat- programs, um, especially dealing with politics and people's worldviews, and kind of their heartstrings, their, heart strings, their emotions, and, and and to the degree of thinking independently, mm-hmm. um, and thinking for them, uh, and reading, and kind of deep diving. Um, there's a um, um, an author who wrote a book that kind of is an answer to the 1984 book. Yeah. Um, and it, his name was Aldous Huxley, um, and he wrote a book called A Brave New World. Um, and it talked about essentially the breakdown of society from convenience and from the way that um, technology and other things will just give us everything we want to the point where we won't think for ourselves. Um, and then, so on this book, there's a gentleman that kind of commentated about it. He's a media theorist. And uh, I wanted to read this quote about it. Um, that's super, super impressive quote. Um, so it says here, what Orwell feared, so Orwell is one that wrote 1984. Which is interesting because <clears throat> 1984 was written in 1948 mm-hmm. and A Brave New World was 1931. Right, so he commented on it. Oh, so this is the guy's quote. Okay, sorry, it's yeah. not just the quote from the book. Okay, right. that's why I was looking up and I was like, wait right. a second, I'm just making sure. What, what Orwell feared were those who would ban books. What Huxley feared was that there would be no reason to ban a book. For there would be no one who wanted to read one. Orwell feared those who would deprive us of information. Huxley feared those who would give us so much that we would be reduced to passivity and egotism. (laughs) Orwell feared that the truth would be concealed from us. Huxley feared that the truth would be drowned in a sea of irrelevance. Orwell feared we would become a captive culture. Huxley feared we would become a trivial culture preoccupied with some equivalent of the feelies 
the orgy porgy and the centrifugal bumble pump bumble puppy which we neither one of us know, know what, what that, that is. is so no it's okay as huxley remarked in a brave new world revisited the civil libertarians and rationalists who are ever on the alert to oppose tyranny failed to take into account man's almost infinite appetite for distractions <laughs> i.e facebook instagram twitter in yeah. 1984 people are controlled by inflicting pain in brave new world they are controlled by infi- inflicting pleasure in short or were or well feared that we were that we that what we fear will ruin us huxley feared that what we desire will ruin us that's terrifying a strong dude. Yeah, they That's are good. time travelers, Amador. It's it's crazy. I think that either one of those are. <clears throat> it's interesting because I think that what we're seeing is um, Huxley played out here, right? And we're seeing Orwell played out in places like North Korea, mm-hmm. where his yeah, book, his totally book, his book is yeah, that's a great point. is banned there. Yeah, um, it was banned with Putin and the Soviet Union, mm-hmm. like because that was the idea that's that they point. had. Um, but this is this is a good point because yeah. it's 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 essentially the same coin. It's just one or the other side of it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's that's exactly why what we started with was like you need to respect people's perspectives and learn mm-hmm. from them because that's how that's how we will learn. That's how we will not become. But also complacent. not not a, but but to see that there it, we do we are inundated with information. Yes, and it's 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 overwhelming. Yeah. But it's to the point also where people are just like, that's it. I'm shutting down. I'm yeah. just not going to look. I'm not yeah. going to try. I'm not going to listen to or somebody just else's get angry. perspective. Yeah, because and, I just have so much information. And dismiss it because it's not. it doesn't make me feel good. Right. Like, yeah. oh, come on. Come All right. On, let's TIL it. TIL it, buddy. You uh, go first. Also, I, I also before we do that, like, go vote. Yeah. It doesn't bother me. Like, You can still vote tomorrow. Honestly, who you vote for. Like, that, that is a right that we have and a freedom that I believe that we have to express go do it get it Ooh, hit me with but your don't first mail it TIL. in the burning mail truck TIL. Yeah, i almost read your til mm. you would be like wait that's mine mm-hmm. not, not anymore uh today i learned that scratching an itch feels so good because the brain sees scratching as mild pain so it releases serotonin to provide relief from that pain oh that is fascinating <laughs> is that the same thing with sneezing i wonder hmm. that yeah those are the same thing it feels good though I think that's just really Oh my gosh. Today I learned in South Korea there are solar panels in the middle of a highway that have a bicycle path underneath them. So cyclists are protected from the sun, isolated from traffic, and the country produces clean energy that way. So in the middle of highways they have these basically like lane bike lanes. Yeah. And then they're covered by solar panels. Oh weird. Super cool. That's cool. Uh, today I learned in 2008, the mayor of Belleville, Illinois, banned anyone over 12 from trick-or-treating with violators receiving fines or even jail time. Whoa, what a hater. My goodness. Over 12, not under 12. Okay, give me your over next 12. TIL. I don't got another one. That was my only, that was my Oh, you only got TIL. one too? Oh, had, cool. No, I had two. I just did two. My first one was the itch. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, first shower thought coming your way. Boop, ba boop, 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 boop. Essentially, your bed is a wireless charger that takes about seven to ten hours to fur- fully charge a specific type of human. It's super inefficient, just like wireless chargers. Isn't that funny? <laughs> uh, most people would find licking the inside of a pipe disgusting, but wouldn't think twice about drinking water coming from that same pipe. Very true. Great point. Great point. You know we've messed up as a species when a bad year for humans is a good year for the planet. Yeah. You know we're doing something wrong. Yeah. The way we treat moths versus how we treat butterflies is the prime mm. example of pretty privileges. Very true. Exact. Very true. They're like exactly very the true. same thing. Very true. Um, You know, when you think about it, people really don't come in all shapes and sizes. <laughs> we're almost the same shape <laughs> and a couple different sizes. Yep. Right? It's true. But dinosaurs, like dinosaurs came in all shapes and sizes. Well, we think. I mean, according to Bones. According to Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> the easiest way to tell if you're obese is if a child draws your stick figure with a line torso or a circle torso. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a good one. Okay, I really like this. I want to do this to somebody. Saying have a nice day is really friendly, but saying enjoy the next 24 hours of your life is very threatening. <laughs> Tis true. Because you might get attacked in a church. Yeah. Ooh, we, are, yeah. we are the first generation in human history to see actual video footage of what life was like 100 years ago. Ooh. Yeah. Whoa. That's wild. That's wild. That's really cool. All right. It's the last one. Okay. If you want to trick a genie, then all you have to do is write everything you want down on a piece of paper and then wish for everything on that paper to come true. <sighs> so true. That might work. I'm not sure. Genie might see through it. Okay. I have one last one. I skipped over some of mine, but this one was good. Romance movies are relationship pornography and give people unrealistic views about love. Yeah, girls. Don't watch any more of that romance. Boop. All right, guys. Mic drops. Wait, Thanks for tuning in. don't drop. <laughs> Hopefully you have a great week. Get out and vote. We yep. appreciate you all. And no matter what, it's going to be okay, guys. We'll work through it. We're peace. Seriously. It's we're all gonna family. Be okay. Everybody, we're the human race. We're and in it together, okay? Also, don't blame me if Trump wins. Come on, guys. We're in it together. Blame Curtis. Make it work. <laughs> love, not hate. We appreciate y'all. Make love, not war. Make love, not war. Or All something day, or other. Day. Read 1984. It's really good. Yeah. And now I want to read A Brave New World. Yeah. It sounds good too. It's all good. All right, guys. All Peace right. out. Have a great week. We'll talk See to you later. Ya.